Uh, hi, I'm Arthur, and this wasn't the video I was planning on uploading today, but due to some issues that were out of my hands, I'm probably going to end up having an extra release next week. So, that's pretty cool. Basically, this is a stream that I recorded once upon a time, but I cut out a few of the pieces that no one really wanted to really watch, but it's essentially just me doing a Space Marine tier list of all the 20 legions. I also played Rogue Trader afterwards, but this is for people who just want to watch the tier list and just kind of see what my opinions are of all the legions after all this time. I'm just doing this preamble so that you all go in and aren't really confused as to why I'm talking to a chat that isn't there, but um... Yeah, hope you all like this. I had a lot of fun doing it a few weeks back, and if you guys want to watch me stream more often, I stream every Sunday on this channel, so feel free to show up sometime. But without further ado, uh, hey, Arthur from the past, how do you feel about the Dark Angels? First up, the Dark ang the Dark Angels. Um, dark Angels are kind of a weird spot for me, so I'm gonna just I'm gonna say what my justification is before I place them. So. Um, when I first got into the game, I don't know if you guys noticed this, because this is a theory that I have, that the most widely distributed and, uh, sorry, overly distributed box in the history of 40k was Dark Vengeance. Dark Vengeance was a box that was released in, uh, I believe, the middle to the beginning part of 7th edition. Uh, it was Chaos Space Marine, specifically the Crimson Slaughter, which is a fun side war band, and they were fighting against uh, Dark Angels, and it came with like a bunch of more up-to-date Dark Angels, like Command Terminators and, and like old 6th edition Marines with like whatever. But um, because of that, when I first started playing Warhammer, it was in early or late 7th edition, and then I ended up hitting my stride in, er, in 8th edition. Uh, but I saw at least like 10 Dark Angels players. Like the biggest guy in my community played Dark Angels, uh, one of my friends uh, played Dark Angels. She's out to the wind now. I think she plays Mechanicus now. Um, so I had like an overexposure of Dark Angels when I first started. And because of that, it kind of numbed me to anything cool that they could do. Because I always found just the Dark Green to be kind of like, I sleep. And I find their shtick of being always secretive kind of meh, kind of boring. But I will say, my opinion is always subject to change. And I've been reading a lot of more modern, uh, or not modern, but like more Dark Angels lore that's kind of been changing my opinion of it. I've been reading uh, the Arcs of Omens trilogy, which is kind of important because that's kind of when the Lion came back. I read uh, Son of the Forest and I'm going through the Horus Heresy and Lionel Johnson is just a fucking war criminal. Um, so uh, I'm going to say that I appreciate them. I think they're cool and I like aspects of them, like the Ravenwing, the, the Hexagrammaton as a whole is actually like really cool. So Ravenwing, Deathwing, the Greenwing, um, I think they're all cool, but it all kind of just balances out to be a low B. I'm going to say like Dark Angels are like dead middle of the pack with like a plus one. Um, I'm okay with that. So second Legion doesn't exist. Third Legion, let's go to that. We have the uh, Emperor's Children. Uh, Emperor's Children are... Hmm. I have a very convoluted and complicated um, history with the Emperor's Children because I love the idea of what Slanesh corruption can represent. Uh, I think that Slanesh corruption as a whole is kind of shot in the foot by all of the bullshit that, like, kind of trite writing has done. Um, and because of how poorly written, like, a lot of Slanesh corrupted marines are, it kind of handicaps them like you wouldn't fucking believe. But I believe in, like, I don't know, I, I just believe in better storytelling for them. So I do think that they have the potential to be A tier, but, like, we're gonna bring them down a tier because Lucius the Eternal exists. Uh, fuck that guy. Uh, and then we're gonna have to bring them down a tier again because they are kind of shittily written, even in the Horus Heresy. Like, Saul Tarvitz, pretty cool, but, like, he fucking, he didn't last that long, right? Um, and then we're gonna have to bring them down a tier because Eidolon exists. Uh, I don't like Eidolon that much. Uh, Eidolon was annoying. But then we're gonna bring them back up a tier because Fabius Bile exists. But then we're gonna have to bring him back down a tier again because Fabius Bile is barely a fucking Emperor's Children member. He's kind of his own thing at some point, at a certain point. So, um, 
Yeah, I'm gonna put them in. I would say like high T, high D, low C tier. Um, Rylanor, Rylanor. E okay, you know what? Because someone brought up Rylanor, they're low C. They're a low C now, just because Rylanor. Rylanor is. Yeah, no, no. I saw like, I saw like uh, uh, Valste. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Brought up Rylanor. Hard agree. Rylanor based, based as fuck. Um, okay. So, we kind of have our middle of the pack, guys, so we're gonna go in here, uh, and we're gonna go pretty strong here with, um, the Iron Warriors. Iron Warriors. Good faction. I know, hard stance, right? Um, I think Iron Warriors are kind of going up in the rankings for me just because, one, I adore their aesthetic. I love the hyper-industrial... Um, how do I put this? I love the hyper-industrial, there is no such thing as ethics in accordance with warfare, just get the job done kind of mentality. I think it's interesting to see them do stuff, and it has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that, um, uh, I'm currently reading through, uh, Uriel Ventress Dead Sky Black Sun, or Black Sky Dead Sun, I always forget which it was. Uh, but I'm reading the third book, and they're part of that, and Hanzu's there, and Hanzu is just kind of fun. Um, I want to read more with him, because I know Chaos Storm, or Storm of Chaos? Storm of Iron. I forgot what it was, but that's next on my list after I read this book, because, um, I want to read more about Hanzu. And Hanzu is, is pretty cool. Um, mainly because, like, if you guys haven't read, like, Dead Sky, Black Sun, whatever it's called, book three, um, there's, like, a war that's breaking out of Medrengard, which is the home world of the, uh, oh, shit, Breton, gift subbing five people, hell yeah, thank you so much for that, Storm of Iron, perfect, that's the one, um, in, like, Hanzu pisses off two other, um, warsmiths on the planet of Medrengard, which, if you don't know, Medrengard is the home world of all iron warriors, that's where Perturabo in demon form is, and, um, Basically, he pisses off two of them, and because Hansu is like a, a mongrel, like he's like half Iron Warrior, half Iron Imperial Fist, if I remember correctly, he wages war against them, but he plays against them by realizing they're Iron Warriors, all they want to do is siege. So he just plans this psyop of going in like normal Iron Warrior army or armor and then sneaking into their bases and then just gunning them all down. He's absolutely fucking insane. Uh, high A tier. High A. Not S. Not exactly S. But they're... Yeah. Not exactly S. I'd say they're cl as close to an S as you can get without actually being one. Uh, and then, after them, we have White Scars. I might have gotten the order wrong, because it might have been White Scars first, but, like, what- if we get it, uh, it wrong, who cares, really? Um, White Scars. Let's get you over here. So, uh, White Scars, I am very firmly of the opinion that, uh, White Scars are a chapter specifically for lore nerds. Because you'll never find the layman kind of waxing poetically about how cool their lore is. I've never seen that. Um, <laughs> put them in S tier or I will commit crimes. <laughs> uh, so, um, excuse me. Uh, I think that the um, White Scars are cool. I, I genuinely like them. I think that they are the encapsulation of, I guess, what the Emperor's concept of freedom was. I have this, like, feeling that, <laughs> that uh, every single uh, Space Marine Legion is meant to, or at least the Primarchs, are meant to represent a single concept or an aspect of the Emperor, and I think nothing is more apparent for the White Scars than the fact that they represent freedom in all its forms. They barely were a part of the Imperium. They barely wanted to be a part of the Imperium. And because of that, they kind of just went off and did their own thing. Uh, Jagatai Khan has a sense of humor, which puts him above almost every other Primarch, because some do. Uh, I know there's, like, a lot of jokes that uh, Rebute Gilliman, um, he makes jokes sometimes, and it unnerves people, but other than that, um, I don't know. I, I like him. I think, oh, wait, is this Black Legion? Oh, that's Black Legion. I didn't see the hazard stripes. Okay, so Black Legion goes back down. They use the exact same model. Um, but yeah, I, I think he's like, I think he's genuinely cool. Uh, I, I think 
Jagged Eye is really cool. I think the White Scars are kind of underutilized in the modern day, but I think they're cool. Um, I think they are going to be... Not an S, because I don't like them that much. Uh, I don't feel comfortable putting them in A, but I don't feel... Um, they're like... Like B plus, they're like the as high as you can get in the B tier without actually being an A. Uh, I love their aesthetic, um, but I just don't like it enough to justify putting them there because like, I, like the best way I put it is like if I see an Iron Warrior on a cover of a book, I'm more likely to read it. If I see a, a, a White Scar on a book, I <laughs> if I see a White Scar on the cover of a book, I'm like. It's probably a good book, but, you know, I'll pass for now. Um, Dark Angels, are, that, that's kind of how it is. Uh, okay, there's a lot of people upset in the chat. Holy shit. Sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, yes, yeah, Space Wolves are next. Um, I'm not a fan, but they're growing on me. Uh, I will say... Huh, how do I put this? So... I find Space Wolves as a faction are hard to follow. I find their their mixed aesthetic can be so... <laughs> I'm leaving. This is bullshit. I find their aesthetic can be kind of rough, I guess. How do I put this? Um, I think that if you have a good writer, you can make them be some of the best written characters in, like, the setting. Because, um, I've read some really good, um, <laughs> uh, see you around, Remembrancer. Um, but, uh, I think, hmm, um, so I've been reading a lot of, like, uh, side stories like I like reading the anthologies of uh, like space marine stories and one of my favorite anthology stories of all time I forgot what the name of it but it stars a space wolf named Bjarni Arvison uh, it's part of the space marine successors anthology which covers um, the introduction of primaris marines into other chapters than like the main legion so like the flesh terrors uh, the new re newly reincarnated soul drinkers and shit um Bjarni was the protagonist of one of them, and he was, like, genuinely an interesting character. Uh, and alongside that, I read um, a story recently in the Horus Heresy. It was... Oh, God, what was it called? The Battle for the Abyss, which is, unironically, a pretty bad book. It wasn't that good. But the Space Wolf in it was okay. He was kind of stereotypical, um, but I did think he was pretty interesting, except for... Okay, it was only because he did one moment... Uh, it, it was kind of, okay. The only reason why these guys are not an F tier is because of one sentence. Um, because I, I'm, I'm, st I'm stuttering and I'm stammering. Um, but, um, in, in Battle for the Abyss, there's a space wolf. I can't remember his name. Um, it was probably something super generic because Battle for the Abyss was kind of bad. But he ended up fighting an assault captain of the Word Bearers and... He ended up beating this motherfucker to death. Like, like, all, cut him in half and shit. Like, like, he had a rune axe and, like, he fought this assault captain with, like, a jump pack and one, like, hand over fist. They end up breaking into the Furious Abyss, which is, like, the largest ship the Imperium ever, has ever produced. And he ends up finding, like, the arming chamber that has all of, like, the main weapons that the word bearers have. But there's also a word bearer being inducted into a dreadnought sarcophagus. He finds out it was the guy that he thought he killed earlier, but they dragged his, like, broken half of a corpse back and then did it in there. The guy wakes up, looks at him, and goes... Oh, you motherfucker, I recognize you. And then Bjarni, instead of, like, being a little bitch and being like, Oh, no, I might lose. I have to play this tactically. The the author describes him as, like, he grit his teeth into a feral sneer and simply uttered the words, Round two. And that's when the chapter ends, and I'm like, This motherfucker. Th this is when... Like, he became capital H him. I, I thought it was just, like, super hype that, like, this space wolf was like, nah, this works. This is pretty cool. Uh, I'm like, oh, fuck, I never killed a dreadnought before. Like, I like that mentality. Um, plus, there's, like, uh, other space wolves that I like. Like, um, 
the jackal wolf himself. I'm talking them up from D tier now because I feel I'm remembering there's a lot of space wolves that I like, uh, like the jackal wolf, Lucas the trickster. Um, oh, Lucas the trickster was cool. Hager the mountain, the space marine that like one-handed without terminator armor, uh, a, a thunder hammer, and was able to fight dreadnoughts and shit. Um, you know what? Fuck it. Low C. They're low C. Ah! Middle C. They're a middle C. I'll give it that. I'll give them that. <laughs> it was it was pretty cool. I'll go with that. Middle C. Just because of like the fact that like as a whole, I don't like their aesthetic that much. Uh, I think it can be a little lame. But I think the individual characters are pretty cool. Logan Grimnar is up there too. That's I remember. That's the reason why they're not below the Emperor's Children. Because Logan Grimnar, when he showed up and just started killing people after like um, their encounters with uh, the Grey Knights, that shit pretty fucking cool. I will say. Uh, the space was. I'm just seeing what everybody. Don't forget the time Bjorn punked the Inquisition. Yeah, that's fun. D tier is the highest they should go. Nah, I, I kind of like just for the characters. Just just for the characters. Like if I see a space wolf on a book, I'm not exactly likely to read them. But I will say if they have specific space wolves on a book, I will read them. Um. Uh. So. Okay, who's next? So, Space Wolves, uh, Seventh Legion is the Imperial Fists. Um, Imperial Fists are boring. They are boring. They have tactics that work. High A tier. Um, high A, like A plus, almost an S, and a no, I am not going to. Uh, I am not going to renege on this. I genuinely think they are like high A tier. So, the um, Imperial Fists are boring. Imperial Fists are very basic, very standard. But once you like actually like look at the lore and the characters and shit, they are so fucking crispy. They're so fucking cool. Um, like. Just the aesthetic of like phalanx style tactics with like gigantic ass shields and bolt guns hooked onto like special like oh, I got what they're I forgot what they're called but it's like I think it's called like a pavail or something but like the little bolter hooks that are on the sides of the shields and they make these like giant shield walls with bolt guns and then slowly march forward like super aesthetic like I could imagine like Sabaton blaring as they're like running forward vindicator tanks in the sides forming up this shit you got like characters like Fafnir Ran who's got like the twin uh, like power axes and a great shield on his back you've got um, Alexis Pollux who is the certified big man of the setting you've got people like Sigismund like even like pre-badass Sigismund, he was still one of the most interesting characters I've ever read. And yes, no, there is documentation of pre-badass Sigismund. Pre-badass Sigismund was like... Uh, in the Rogaldorn Primarch book, you find Sigismund when he's just like, kind of new to the whole thing. He even loses in the book against like an honor duel with a Dark Angel, uh, and it was genuinely one of the more interesting learning pieces. Um, yeah, the Huskarls are drip the fuck out. No, I hard agree with you on that, fuck. Um, I, I adore the Imperial Fists. I, um, I ran Imperial Fist rules in, like, the last edition, and I still technically do now because I run, um, oh god, what's their name? Black Templars. Black Templars are, like, my main Space Marine faction right now. Because I run three Space Marine factions. I run Black Templars, I run Minotaurs, and I run Raptors. And two of those are probably Imperial Fist successors, I'm just saying. I say probably because, okay, let's face it, the Minotaurs are actually just, like, <laughs> they're just um, Iron Warriors successors, and there's no goddamn way they're not. Um, so yeah, uh, next up, we've got the easiest choice I've made all night. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, Night Lords, what can I say? Um, they are my favorites of all Space Marine Legions. Um... They are the worst of all the Space Marine Legions. Like, even in, like, a combat effectiveness standpoint, they're genuinely the worst. 
Um, high A, yes, but lower than Iron Warriors. I'm sorry, I make the list, dog. Uh, okay, I swear to God, if you fuck over Iron Hands, I will be pissed. I think you're gonna be happy about where I put the Iron Hands, cause I've been I'm thinking about it a little bit. I'm not e I'm not eas I'm not against being swayed by chat. Like if you guys give me reasons, yeah. But um, uh, what can I say about the Night Lords that haven't been said? Uh, Night Lords are genuinely cool. They have an aesthetic that is completely unique to themselves. Um, they have a completely unique silhouette, even in comparison to the rest of the Trader Marines. Um, they have unique fighting tactics, and they're all terrible. Like, they're not even, like, good tactics. They just... It's why in, like, a direct fight, they usually lose, but they're the guys that, like, they sneak away, and when you're not looking, they come back in the middle of the night and bash your head open with a fucking rock. I like that. That's like chimp energy. I like chimp energy marines. They are not fair fighters. I'm excited. Also, fun fact for those of you who didn't know, they just announced a new book for the um, Night Lords. I think it's a new book. It might be a reprint. If you go on like the pre-orders, it's going up for next week. It's pretty cool. Um, what else? Uh, they have another new book coming up that is for Morvan Val, who's going up against a apparently a legendary Night Lord's war leader by the name of the End of Saints soon, which I like Morvan Val in concept, and I love um, the Night Lords, and that name, the End of Saints, is pretty fucking cool. Um, but yeah, no, uh, my chimp energy screaming maniac marines, absolutely nothing, nothing better. Um, it, again, it's like you can sum up things in single sentences. And I forgot who it was that told me this. I think it was Chrono. Uh, Chrono the Harlequin, if you don't know. Uh, live from the Black Library. Go watch his shit. Amazing work. Um, he goes in depth on topics that I am too much of a big, thicky bobo to even consider doing. But um, I was on a call with him, and he mentioned that, like, Aaron Dembski Bowden is the master of coming up with, like, individual lines that are incredibly memorable and quotable and nothing is more quotable than like the scene set the first time when like the room goes black there's smoke filling the air you hear a slightly soft thunk of metal on metal and you just hear pray sight and then like you see the red lights turn on of two eyes and then th and then like four eyes and then six eyes and then like there's just a bunch of people in the room and I'm like man that's terrifying and I love that as an aesthetic um yeah no uh genuinely uh night lords are my favorite I don't think I have to justify it any further than that but, but, but yeah uh so 8th legion ninth legion is the Oh, I'm gonna get shit for this. I know I'm gonna get shit for this. Um, the heroes of Hell's Reach, as if there was only one. Um, so, you're not a thingy bobo, you're easily understandable. Trust me, if I wasn't, like, you should see how much editing I have to do to make my, um, my videos actually coherent <laughs> in terms of the audio. But I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Or when he rescues Octavian, he said, I said the dude, blood and anal ester, oh boy, do it. Okay, so, blood angels. Oh, wow, when I started talking about blood angels, I just got five DMs from someone. Let's see what we got here. Um, da, 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 let's see. <laughs> uh, let's take a look, see here. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Uh, Blood Angels. Oh boy. It's time for me to excommunicate like half of my audience because I just don't like the Blood Angels. Uh, I like them more than I first started. Um, but I find as I read about them on the macro scale of things, I just don't give a single shit. And that's not saying Blood Angels successors. I love blood angel successors like um i just put up a video if you're if you're an arthur lord like you pay for the channel membership um you um you get access to the video i just put up yesterday uh which is part nine in season three of meet the chapters called the angels vermilion uh and angels vermilion are a fantastic successor chapter um flesh terrors blood drinkers um lamenters i'm still reading about them um uh, genuinely fucking cool. I like them. 
Uh, flesh terrors, I find, are like at least three tiers higher. Flesh terrors are probably, in my opinion, a between or above both Imperial Fists and uh, Iron Wars. I love the flesh terrors so fucking much. Um, so, that being said, we're not ranking them based off of their successors. We are ranking them off of what I think about the Legion itself, and I think fucking lame. They're not... Mm, mm, they're, they're not F tier. They're not F tier, because I know what my F tier is going to be. They're not F tier. I, I think they are a mid to low D. Um, Angels Vermilion are underrated. I do love them, but uh, I think, like, there's so much they could do with, like, the vampire aesthetic. I think there's so much they could do with the berserker aesthetic, but everything is so... <sighs> Everything is so on the nose. It's just like, oh, we're the blood angels. So our, our symbol is an angel blood drop. There's like characters in the blood angels that kind of redeem them. But I find I just don't like them. I just don't. There's like a um, good example character. I really like Mephiston. I think he's really cool. I like the fact that he can just say his sword's name, which is Vitaris and summon it. But if we're going to give the space wolf shit for being cringe and having like, oh, hello, wolf lord, uh, Canis Wolfborn. I'm glad you're equipped with the wolf claws and you're standing on top of the alpha wolf for the space wolves. And it's like, if we're going to give space wolves shit for that, we have to be like, oh, that uh, hello, the Mephiston of the Blood Angels. Your sword, Vitaris, is definitely good at slaking the red thirst. Like, it's all blood. It's all synonyms for blood. I And, yeah, it's I just don't like them. The I think they're boring. I've never read a Blood Angel story that's been interesting, except for, like, the, like, I would have loved to see the skies of Ball one last time bit. But that's just a single scene. Ah! No, we're not upgrading them from D. They're in D tier. Fuck you. Fuck all of you. Fuck what your opinion is. I'm right. Um, but that being said, like, um, uh, the Angel Sanguine, amazing. Angels Vermilion, awesome. Uh, Blood Drinkers, uh, Flesh Terrors, the fucking Knights of Blood, fucking cool. I love them. One example with Mephiston. Yeah, no, Mephiston's really cool. Um, then we have, like, Dante, I think, is interesting. Um, I'm not a big fan of him. I think he's cool, but I just haven't read enough about him to be interesting. Um, I did not like the devastation of Ball as much as I could have. There are bits of it that I think are really interesting, but there's some bits that I'm like, that's kind of stupid. Um... There was, like, one Marvel tier moment that I'm remembering poorly, probably, that, like, I, sorry, I'm not a big fan of Marvel movies, but, like, there's this, like, moment where they're trying to fly to... So, for those of you who don't know, um, the little blood drop that's on all of your miniatures for um, uh, Blood Angels, that is a blood quartz or a blood crystal that is on Ball and Ball Secundus, I believe, or Secundus, if you want to pronounce it how they usually do. Um, the crystal itself actually harnesses passive psychic energies it's why when you see a blood angel like librarian they usually have like a shitload of those crystals around them because they naturally just enhance their psychic abilities so they were flying a ship to kind of try and fuck with the hive mind that was invading ball they were taking it to a mountain where the crystals were mined and they were taking an entire collegiate group of um uh, Blood Angel psychers to go there, led by Mephiston. They were getting assailed by harpies and a bunch of, like, Tyranid bioforms, the giant flying lizard monsters. And Mephiston undoes his buckle and just says, I shall be right back, as the door opens up and he flies out and sprouts, like, blood wings, and I'm just like, I'll be right back, dog. Shut the fuck up. That's cringe. You're cringe for that. That's, that's cringe as fuck. It was cool what he did. Like, because again, Mephiston is like up there with Tigurius is like some of the strongest psychers out there. But I do think Mephiston is like technically strong, like stronger than Tigurius. I think Tigurius is only strong on par with Mephiston because he allegedly has like a staff that was owned by Malkador the Sigilite. And he's apparently also like Mephiston on the hit list of the hive minds because uh, Tigurius was able to look into the hive mind at one point, but I digress. So, Blunt Angels, fuck you, I'm locking it in. They're in D tier, mid to low. Yeah, I'm gonna get hay for this, but the Alpha Legion F tier. You're allowed to say that. 
Um, one second, I got a bunch of. Ah, oh, fuck! I got a message from. <laughs> ah, Eric's in the chat. I can tell. Oh, uh, one second, I gotta mess this up really quickly. Um. Okay. Um. Uh, back to it. Um. Cringe, but cool. 40k in a nutshell. More or less. Uh, so, next up, we have the Iron Hand. So, um, how do I put this properly? I don't hate Iron Hands. Uh, I like them more than I probably should. Because, um, it's like, how do I put this? I, I think the Alpha Legion is... Not the Alpha Legion, sorry, I'm reading the chat and everybody's like, Alpha Legion F tier! No, fuck you! Alpha Legion S tier! And I'm like, oh, well, we're getting there, we're getting there, we're literally only halfway there! Um, so, uh, I've been reading more about the Iron Hands, because Iron Hands are one of those chapters that often gets misrepresented. They are usually seen as cold, calculating, and what have you, but um, seeing it through different perspectives, you kind of get a better lens of this. So, what are the Iron Hand's purpose? So every single Space Marine chapter has a purpose. So for one, Night Lords, they're terror. They are meant to make people so... They're basically Batmaning things, where uh, people are so afraid to commit crimes because of the punishment that will happen that they will never commit crimes again. Um, Imperial Fists, they are... We siege the walls, we break them down. We can make walls that people can't break. They're siege experts. Same with Iron Warriors, but Iron Warriors are more about the attacking siege as opposed to the defending part of it. Uh, White Scars, Bikes, um, fucking Dark Angels are just like the all-around best sweep and clear kind of group. But what do the Iron Hands do? And I kind of think appreciate them for the level of commitment to the bit they have. Um, and the purpose is... We do not save civilians. We do not save. We kill things. We kill them until there is nothing left, and then we grind what's left into dust. So, in appreciation for the fact that they believe themselves to be a tool, and really good at being a tool, they kind of get points for it when they're not trying to do anything else. Their whole shtick is they are going to burn things to pieces. They are going to smash them to bits. They are the clenched fist that will crush anything that is in their way. Which is why whenever uh, imp uh, Iron Hands go into the field, they work with machine-like efficiency, use heavy weapons like tanks, dreadnoughts, the biggest guns you can fucking think of, they are not there for to worry about civilian casualties as there's not going to be like locations for civilians to hide for there to be casualties to report. They will turn things to atoms and when everything is atoms, they will leave. Um, so, with that in mind, there's only so many points I can give them. So I'm going to have to say they're kind of like... I'm going to say they're lower... Hmm... I will say... They are lower... They're definitely lower than White Scars. I'm, I'm realizing that. But are, do I like them more than I like Dark Angels? Chat, quick, sell me about uh, Iron Hands real quick. Oh yeah, Ferris Manus! He's pretty cool. I like Ferris Manus. Uh, lower than Dark Angels. Um, <laughs> Ferris Manus dies in the book he's introduced, unfortunately. I just remember that, like, I was hanging out with a friend once, and I was explaining every single Primarch to them. Uh, better not put them above. <laughs> um, a friend of mine, uh, I was talking to her, and I was, like, describing the Primarchs to her. And I was like, so, you got this Primarch. And she's like, uh-huh. And I'm like, he was known as being so ugly that they called him the Gorgon because people would freeze when they see him for the first time. And <laughs> she's like, okay, what does he look like? And I was like, okay, here you go. And I posted a picture and she just goes, wood. 
and I had to be taken aback by that, and I just remember that. Uh, but yeah, no, Ferris Manus, unfortunately, he doesn't get much expanded upon. Uh, and if you're in the chat, I'm sorry for outing you like that, but that was really funny. Uh, okay, so, 10th Legion done. Officially a little over halfway done here. Uh, 11th doesn't exist, and 12th. Okay, I'm gonna get shit for this. Um, I, okay. If you would have asked me, like, six months ago, my opinion on the World Eaters, they would have been, like, high F tier. Um, yeah. Um, I would have been, uh, sorry, I'm reading the chat if I pause for a second there. Um, I would have been, like, F tier. Like, high F, maybe low D. But uh, a friend of mine, and I bring this up a lot, he's in the chat. He pointed this out to me, and it, I, I never thought of it this way until someone did, that um, the World Eaters are less so a faction as they are now just a, an analogy for the cycle of abuse. Because um, Angron was only... He only identified with the nails that are put into his head because that was the only thing he had the ability to identify with, and thus he couldn't identify anything that wasn't rage, so he passed that down to his sons. So it was like grandfather to son, son to son. Um, and it, the cycle perpetuates, and that's kind of what the world eaters do. They now abduct other newer marines, and they forcefully make them go through that psychosurgery and then forcefully indoctrinate them into their beliefs. So they're perpetuating that kind of cycle of abuse, which I know it's like, I know it's kind of like hammy and a little bit tropey to like do that, but I do think about like the potential here. I, I don't know who made this video. I saw it and I was going to watch it, but like what, what, le what traitor legion has the most potential to be a, um, be brought back as like a normal like loyalist legion without people knowing now belisarius call has already done that like uh sons of antaeus are totally uh successors of um the death guard um and then you have like the red vipers which are probably alpha legion because they do a lot of like cia spook shit um red vipers also have like a dope ass color scheme um, what was that other one? It was, a uh, God, Covenant of Fire are obviously, like, word bearer successors, but, um, there's a lot of traitor gene seed that's out there, but I think the best one that if we were going to study in a vacuum would be the World Eaters. They were shown to be chivalrous knight-like figures prior to the, um, indoctrination with the, uh, the brain worms, so the brain nails and shit, the butcher's nails. Um... And I think that's very interesting. And when I see um, World Eaters books that are very well written, I'm genuinely interested in looking at them because Karn the Betrayer is just such a fun fucking character. He's just so goddamn fun. He's so goddamn interesting. Um, and um, I think like any book that has Karn in it immediately like brings the book up a little bit because especially if it's early Karn where he just woke up like if you read the um, oh god uh, uh, it was a Karn book specifically when he wakes up in like the more modern area or a modern world and he's like oh man this shit's crazy <laughs> really because like if I remember correctly uh, he is like Terran born but he's born on the part of Terra that's supposed to be like Serbia or Siberia like somewhere in that like sh like the the shitty part of just a frozen wasteland Eastern Europe and I think that that's really funny um that <laughs> that you have to worry about like 30 metric tons of pissed off Serb coming to beat the shit out of you like punch a hole through your chest and eat the heart just for fun um yeah, uh, so with that in mind, I'm gonna say not not S tier. I wouldn't say S tier. I'd say... I'd say low A tier, but like really close to being on the same level as the Iron Warriors. Um, I, I genuinely think they're really cool. I like corn possession. If like, I always joke that like, um like if ever I was going to fall to a chaos god it would probably be corn just cause like I, I, I got that dog in me I guess I don't know um 
Yeah, the surface is warm AF this summer. Uh, it's like barbecue and beer country. Neat! Uh. Okay. One second. More keyboard ASMR for all of you. Um. Okay, let's see. Where are we going next? Where are we going next? The, the, the corn dog in you? Yeah, no, for real. Okay, so we got them. So we're going to... This is one that I think is, like, not controversial... Or not as controversial as it used to be. Um, I like the Ultramarines. I like the Ultramarines' successors. I like the way that the Ultramarines look. I like the way that the Ultramarines sound. Uh, I like um, their tactics. I think they're very interesting. Uh, I do think that there was a period where they were written to be the best. And I'm currently reading some books that were from that area. Uh, Uriel Ventress book two. Uh, Uriel Ventress uh, fights and kills a Norn queen, which is... Okay. Um, okay. Let's go. Let's, let's like... Okay, that makes no sense. But like, okay. Um, I will say... I do like the Ultramarines. I like them a lot, actually. I am likely to read a book, play a game, or do something involving them. Um, just because they're involved. Their successor chapters are awesome. But I think the thing that's putting them up above for me is I have never met a character that I have related more to than some Ultramarines. And, like, there's, like, five Ultramarines that I have in mind. Or Ultramarine successors and Ultramarines that I look at and I'm like, vibe. Like, like, that's a mood right there. Like, I feel that. Yeah, like, I'm just like... Like, Rabute Gilliman is kind of up at the top of that list where I'm just like... Nah. I get it. <laughs> like, him looking out the window at this... Like, an exploding sun. He's like, that's another one. <laughs> like, has a fucking... Uh, like, a cigarette. And, like, he's just smoking it. And, like, he's just got the sad Ben Affleck stare on him. As, like, fucking, uh, ultra-depressed Kato Sakari, or Kato Sakarius comes in. And, um, it's like, my lord, we lost another one. And he's like, he just looks at me and says, do we have opium for this? As he looks at his cigarette. Like, I relate to him. Uh, Helen Griffins are nice, yeah. Uh, Iron Snakes, fucking awesome. Iron Snakes are, like, my favorite successor chapter of, uh, the... Ah! Now, nah, Emperor Spears. Emperor Spears have some of the most relatable characters I've ever, like, seen. Uh, I quite enjoy them. Uh, Emperor Spears has... I Okay, fun fact. Uh, Emperor Spears has my favorite character in the entire setting of Warhammer 40k, Warhammer AOS, Warhammer 30k, and pretty much every other Games Workshop property. Um... Points if you know who it is, and if you can guess it, I'll give you a cookie or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah. Uh, but we're not rating them off of... Uh, we're not rating them off of successor chapters. We are, in fact... Um, we're, not, we're not rating them off of successors. We're rating them off of uh, just normal shit. Um, so... With that in mind, I'm going to say they're, I like them more than World Eaters. I do like them more than Iron Warriors. But I don't like them more than uh, Imperial Fist. So they're up there. They're up there for me. Uh, okay. Anid Thiel. Anid Thiel. Based. 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 Uh, same for feeling. White consoles are really funny because I found out about them, uh, from uh, what the fuck was it called? The Lords of Silence book, where they get absolutely fucking molly whopped. Like the entire book, it, like it, there's like two chapters dedicated to uh the white consoles, and they're just like. Okay, so we got word bearers coming from one angle. What what else could happen? And then, like, some chapter surf comes in. It's like, me lord, it looks like the death god are here. And you just see, like, the white console go, oh, sweet fucking Jesus. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. I, I love it so much. Uh, but, yeah, no, white consoles are cool. I got to read more about them because they're, they're fun. Um, 
Yeah, let's see. Gary Stu Smurfs, I sleep. Nah, that's fair. You're allowed to have that opinion. They aren't like that anymore. I find they're like stupid depressed now, but like I think it's very interesting. Uh, okay, so 13 is that. 14 is the Death Guard. Speaking of the Death Guard, finger guns. Um, I have complicated opinions about them. Uh, genuinely, I do. Um, Death Guard are one of those factions that I feel have wasted potential. Uh, I think that Death Guard are a wonderful faction. I think they have an aesthetic that is probably, outside of Night Lords, my favorite out of all the Marines. I love the the disease, the rot, the tentacles. The I love the idea of... Sorry, I just saw Stinky Boys in chat, and I just saw, like... <laughs> I, I'm the mental image of like Perry this loyalist where it's just like the world leader ripping ass or not world leader uh, death guard ripping ass so much that like the word like the world around it is just exploding um but yeah uh, I think the aesthetic is great I love the old creaky armor uh, I love the fact that they're like I think the only legion that is like almost impossible to be separated from their god like world leaders you can remove the corn from them. Um, like, they'll be fucked up forever and kind of schizo angry all the time. But you can do that. Um, like, uh, like, the Slanesh Marines, you can kind of do the same. They don't really need it to survive. The Death Guard are like an entirely different story. The second like the Nurgle goop gets removed from them, they're dead. And not even dead in like a pleasant way, they're dead in like a fuck off painful way. Um <laughs> Just admit you're not taking showers anymore. Omega lol. Nah, 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 nah. You shut up. Shut the fuck up. Uh, that being said, goddamn Mortarian sucks. Mortarian sucks. He's the worst Primarch. I'm locking that one in. That's that's pretty good. Uh, I, one of my other factions, like one of the ones that I play, are Death Guard. But they're like not green Death Guard because green Death Guard kind of blow. Um, I'll say high B tier. We'll say high B tier. I like I like them. I don't like them that much. Um. Hmm. Okay. Next up, 14. Uh, oh, fuck. 15 is Thousand Sons, if I'm remembering correctly. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I always get, I always get, like, past 13. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, who, who's where? Um, Thousand Sons. Low D. I don't like Thousand Sons. I think they're lame. Um... Yeah, Thousand Suns are kind of shitty, I will say. Um, I think Magnus the Red deserved everything he got. I think the people of Prospero didn't deserve anything they got. Um, and I genuinely have absolutely... Wow, there's a lot of really upset people in chat. Um, so... I don't like them. Uh, I don't like their aesthetic. I don't like their, um, I don't know, just their general attitude. Um, I think that some of the Thousand Sons can be interesting characters. And I'm still reading more and more, but like every time I've read about a Thousand Sun, they've always just been disappointing. Uh, I will say the most interesting part of the Thousand Sons that keeps them from being an F is their relationship with the Iron Warriors. Because it's stated that for some reason, in a few books, I forgot which, I know one of them is the Magnus Primark book, that, um, that for, uh, the, tha for Magnus, his best friend of all the legions, of all the other Primarchs, was Perturabo, which I find really interesting. Uh, because in the same book, you have a, an Iron Warrior talking to a Thousand Sun Marine, like, and they're just chilling. The Thousand Sun's like, oh, this guy's just a brute. He has nothing to, he knows nothing of philosophy. And then the um, Iron Warrior's, like, quoting, like, 
uh, philosophy from Olympia because apparently as part of the training regiment for Iron Warriors at the time, you actually did have to learn about philosophy, which the Thousand Sun is like, huh, you're a lot cooler than I thought you were. And then they just made friends. I thought that's like a very interesting idea of like the son is the same as the father type B. I think it's really fucking cool. L tier list, sorry. Um, I think they're really cool. Uh, I think they are very fun. I don't like them, unfortunately. I, I genuinely just don't like them that much. I think their aesthetic's kind of whack. Uh, the big helmets kind of are annoying. I really don't like Araman. I really, really don't like Araman. So they're probably like bottom of that. Uh, and it was technically Sons of Horus, Luna Wolves, and Black Legion next, but we shall see. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm getting so many messages from people behind the scenes on Discord that are just like, I fucking hate you. And I'm like, no, no, dog, that's fair. Um, Black Legion, I, I don't like them. I do not like the Black Legion. But I appreciate them. Where do I go from here? So I find the Black Legion are exactly what they need to be. Kind of like where the Iron Hands are exactly where they need to be. Uh, I think that the Black Legion has some interesting characters. They lose a lot of points for Abaddon, unfortunately, because I just do not like Abaddon in any story I've ever read about him. Um... I think the Black Legion has some interesting ideas. I like the idea that if you are a part of any other Legion, you can join the Black Legion as long as you swear fealty to Abaddon. Most of the other Legions would not allow that. The only other um, analog we have would be something like um, the Death Watch. The Death Watch are kind of that thing where you can like forsake your chapter beforehand and join, but it's seen as like this big taboo. So you can't do that. So Black Legion, I think, are very interesting in the fact that they have like the Hounds of Abaddon, which are the um, uh, world eaters that are like the corn berserkers and shit. Um, they're called the Hounds because it's a reference to their name prior to the um, them becoming the world eaters, which is the War Hounds, if you didn't know that. Um, and I think that's really cool. They got the, the, the dis I forgot what they were called, like Harbingers of Decay are the, the Nurgle worshippers. The Soldiers of Excess or some shit, but I, I can't remember the names because I used to I used to know them because I was thinking of playing Black Legion once upon a time. And I think that's why I think I like them. I just don't like them that much. Uh, I think they can be lame because they do... It just depends on the story. Uh, I think that they're interesting specifically because they are really good villains and they have really interesting ways of going about things. That being said, I'm going to say they're at the top of C tier. Because do I like them more than I like Iron Hands? No, I like the Iron Hands a, a little bit more. Do I like them more than I like um, Space Wolves? Yeah, I do. I think Black Legion go in like high C tier. Uh, so now we've got the F tier. Uh, eat shit, suck my nuts, lick my dick, I don't care. Uh, we're, the word bearers suck dick. They are terrible in every book I've ever seen of them. Yes, I've read the Lorgar Primark book. It was okay. Yeah, uh, that, that's a lie. It was actually really good. I'm just being dramatic. Um, I think that the word bearers are everything that is bad about the um, Black Legion. Like, the whole mustache twirling villain thing is the problem with them. I talk about it in my most recent Legion video of the word bearers. Which is their Flanderized, the, the Flanderization of the series, not the series, the Flanderization of the Legion itself is rough. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's pretty rough, I will say. Um, basically, I find that as they get, uh, as the setting progressed from the Horus Heresy, and even then, they were pretty rough. Um... Okay, sorry to do this. I gotta step out for like a brief second and then we'll finish this to it. So next up uh, we have the uh, Salamanders salamanders are Hmm Salamanders are interesting. Uh, I like the salamanders. I have not read a lot of good fiction involving them I think they can be fun but oh God How do I say this properly without upsetting anybody? 
I find that the reason why salamanders have like the be the reputation they do is specifically because um, the people who play salamanders are usually the kindest, chillest motherfuckers that ever like roam the planet. Um, I think they're good. I'm just reading the chat to see if anybody's got any like takes to give. Um, I think they're good. I don't like them that much though. They're like one of those legions that like I would never play, which is rare because like everything in B tier I would play. Like I'd play these guys. I thought about picking up that new box just so I could make like an army of risen. Um, white scars, I'd love to play them. Uh, death guard, I do play them, but like I can wholeheartedly put them like in C tier because they're not C tier guys. I think they are great and I think they're fun. Um, I think I'm going to put them at the low end of B, but I think that like, I think that's where they're going to stick because I think they're cool. I think individual characters are pretty interesting, but I haven't read any stories involving them that make them seem more than just the exact opposite end of the spectrum that the word bearers are on. Not to, not to sully their name, trust me, they're definitely better written than the word bearers, but I find in the hands of less capable writers, they come off as like, we must protect the people, and that's all they do. Um, which is, eh, it's meh, it's okay, I think it's fine. <laughs> um, how, oh, let's see, uh, we gotta, alright, listen man, I play salamanders, and they're C tier at best. They are philander, flanderized as well. Everybody says kind marines, but they're black. Smithing gets left in the black. Love the vids. Thank you very much for the dono. Or the donation. Dono. Fucking watching too many videos about d dumb people. Um, But, yeah. Uh, I think... I think they're good. I do like the blacksmithing part of them. I love the fact that they have like a, a, a fucking weird our dad will come back if we collect all of his Pokemon cards kind of gimmick. I think they're fine. There's that one, I'll be honest, they're in B tier specifically because I really like that Salamander that was in uh, the Pariah Nexus. God, what the fuck was it called? I think it was just called the Pariah Nexus. Um, who was trying to save as many guys as he possibly could and end up going to blows almost with a sister of battle. Because they're up there. I think B, low B tier, that's where they're at. There's have no appreciation for good villains. I mean, if you look who's in F tier, and you look who's in S tier, I beg to differ. I like it how everybody's like, I love them, they're C tier. I'm, yeah, the Bazinga Nexus. Ooh, spicy. Uh, now we got the uh, Raven card. Um, I like the Raven card. I don't know a lot about them. Uh, I wish I knew more. I, I know the basics, and I know, like, a few characters, like... Uh, I've been reading like a lot of their ancillary media, just the stuff that's like beside them, like uh, stuff for like the Blackguard and um, other successors like that, because you know, Raptors are cool and shit. Um, I think they're cool. I like the way they act. I like their armor aesthetic. I love the stealth mechanics. I, hmm, I think this is going to be the most controversial one I do, but they're definitely a B tier, but they're higher than Salamanders. Because do I like th do I like them more than I like the um, Iron Hands? No, no, I do not. I like the Iron Hands a lot, actually. Um, and I, I think they're good. I, I like the stealth. I like Kavon Shrike uh, in his old armor was fucking awesome with the giant clunky power claw or no power claws, or lightning claws. Uh, I think he was cool as fuck. But I can't go higher than like middle low. Yeah, Nikona Sherikins also up there. Yeah. There, yeah, I, li I like how this is the only one everybody in chat seems to be, like, agreeing on a little bit. <laughs> Everybody's like, you know what? Yeah, I know. That's the thing. I can make... F I'm, I give shit to everybody. I'm fucking... I don't give a shit. I'll fucking... I'll, I'll, 
I shit on my own factions. Like, I can wholeheartedly say Night Lords are the worst Space Marines, but they're still my favorites. <laughs> Uh, I still, I, I like emo aesthetic, and their emo aesthetic is really funny. Uh, I like the little, little, there's a little gimmick, a little fun gimmick with them. And that is, um, I remember, I forgot which book it was, but uh, Conrad Kurz of the Night Lords was interacting with um, uh, uh, Corvus Corax of the uh, uh, Raven Guard. And, Cor and Conrad Kurz is such an insecure little man baby that he gets upset because his eyes are not entirely black. Like, um, uh, uh, Cor uh, Conrad's eyes are like, they have edges of white at the end. It's because his pupils are just ludicrously big all the time. Um, but for some reason, Corvus Corax, his eyes are actually completely black no matter where he looks. So I think that's very interesting. Uh, and I like that as a descriptor because it's just a weird differentiation. So that's why like a lot of uh, Raven Guard, because their gene seed is kind of unstable, they get like pale skin, darker eyes, and darker hair as they like age and shit. Which it's kind of like the Canis Helix for um, the Space Wolves, where as they get older, their teeth uh, grow longer, their hair grows thicker, and more like a timber wolf. And it, it's nice. It's it's nice. Um. Then we have the one that is going to be the most contentious. I could put them in S tier. We will have complaints. I could put them in A tier. We will have complaints. Fucking B tier? Oh, you know people are complaining. C tier? I'm going to find a pipe bomb in my mail. D tier? Man, I'm going to wake up tomorrow. There's going to be a horse's head in my bed. F tier? Fucking... I don't know. Some people might think it's funny. But that's the thing, the probably the most div divisive, but the legion that people care the least about are, um, are definitely, <laughs> um, are definitely the alpha legion. Cause you could either like, you could either buy into the psyop bullshit and think that they're S tier, or you could think they're just a one trick pony that's supposed to be like, or maybe it was all a lie. Like you could think of that like that way. Um, but personally, from my understanding, I'm going to be rating them on an average. Like we're grading on a curve with these guys because they definitely are a little slower and they need that kind of little oomph. So, my first experience with them, I can, the, the tier thing won't go down, so I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna temporarily put them in like F tier while I think about this. Um, I'll put them in just so nobody's upset who just walks in. We'll put them in B tier. So my first experience with the Alpha Legion is the same as a lot of people's first experiences with the Alpha Legion, which is Dawn of War, <laughs> Warhammer, Dawn of War, number one, Sindri Mir, and Lord Ball. Um, those guys are Alpha Legion, and people don't like to acknowledge that because, oh, but they're not stealthy, and they're not a psyop, and they're not secretly loyalists. I'm like, yeah, because that's not the Alpha Legion. You're fucking wrong. Um, so, because of this factor, they end up, um, how do I put this? They end up coming off as a bit of a, like, uh, you ever meet that guy when you're like a kid, like little, little, little Billy down the road, who's like, you're trying to play pretend with him, and you're like, yeah, yeah, I got a sword, it's a stick, I got a shield, it's a smaller stick, and he's like, yeah, well, well, my sword's better than yours, uh, I secretly have the best sword that was ever created, you can't win against me, because I already knew you were going to do that, nuh -uh. I got a sword magic shield, like... That's how a lot of people who defend the Alpha Legion come off as, because they're like, yeah, maybe the Alpha Legion didn't fuck up. Maybe they were just doing that for real. No, I think they're fuck ups. I think that's the whole point. Like, there's entire paragraphs in the Horus Heresy dedicated to other Primarchs just fucking shitting on them. Like, oh god, what is it? It's like, uh, Horus hims- oh, we got a donation. Best way to represent them is to put them in every single tier. No, 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 oh man, we got two donations. One second, I missed them. Uh, I forgive you for Blood Angels. I'm happy that the Raven Guard isn't F. Going to do a video on the end of the Siege of Terra, uh, Siege of Terra and the Great Scouring? Yeah, I am going to be doing a video on the Siege of Terra and the Great Scouring. Um, but the thing is, I got to read the books to get there. I'm not going to skip ahead and do like the trendy thing. 
of um, going on Reddit or just finding excerpts and reading the books to just kind of understand what's happening. I actually want to read the entire story, get up to it, and then just make an entire, like, two-hour-long video of, like, okay, so what is the Her Horus Heresy and what happened? Uh, great Scouring, when that happens, I'm going to start that shit. The great Scouring is fucking awesome. I love seeing the up-and-coming chapters. It also, or up-and-coming uh, chapters of Space Marines, rather. Uh, I'm also excited to see, like, Nasir Amit be the first of the Flesh Terrors and bring angry Marines together. I think that's really cool. But I, I've been pretty adamant that I'm not going to skip ahead. I'm not going to talk about things that I don't know anything about. Because um, I find that's a very common trend. I find a lot of people will tend to stick to reading the wikis and go off of the knowledge from, like, Reddit post wikis, which are usually pretty biased. Um, so I go in with as little information as possible to try and understand them from first-party sources. That's just how I've always been. Um, I used to be in, like, academic sciences, so I had to, like, vet my sources and make sure that everything I was saying had something to back it up. So um, I want to do that and make sure that my opinions are my own and not influenced by anyone else's. Um, now, afterwards, I'm open to brokering, like, a discussion about things to change my opinions, um, which is where, like, my opinions of the world eater, or world eaters came from. Like, a friend of mine convinced me a different perspective to think of them, and now I see them in a different way. So, I'm gonna wait to get to that. Uh, next up, oh god, there's so many of you, but thanks for the donation! Uh, the best way to represent them is to put them in every tier. No, I'm gonna put them in a single tier. Don't get me, tw don't get a twist, I'm gonna put them in a tier. And I'm going to upset people with this, but yeah. Uh, oh, twenty dollars! Oh my God! Here's my bribe for put both Imperial Fist and Iron Warriors in A tier. What? They already are. You know what? Good for you. Honestly, you get what you want. Cool. Uh, five dollars. Uh, let's see. A L all really ride the alpha oh sorry alpha legion sorry i'm bad at abbreviations alpha legion really ride the line between interesting and annoying sometimes they're cool and intriguing sometimes it's shallow and get and i get impatient with them yeah no you're 100 percent right um <laughs> yeah uh, i for those who don't know i used to be a paleontologist um uh, for short i was a research assistant for a little while got paid for it it's worked with uh, bones and shit um yeah, no, uh, it was really fun, uh, but I ended up backing out of that, and then it, it was the paperwork that got me. It was never interesting for me. Dropped out of university and floated around jobs. Now I'm here. Did a bunch of weird shit before this. You guys, you guys would be surprised the careers that I've taken up, but yeah. Um, yeah, look at you. Do. Okay, so to get into it now, um, let's see. So to get into it, Alpha Legion... I find are fallible, and I find if they are fallible, like, I'll be honest, if um, we find out that the Alpha Legion are infallible, and they are quite literally terrible at what they do, um, I think that puts them in, like, high A tier. That's like, that's like, I'll put them above fucking Imperial Fists, fuck Valrak. Uh, <laughs> um, but... Uh, I, if I, if I, if, if we find out that they're, like, f like, fallible and they actually do fuck up and they're actually, like, just genuinely, like, a chaos faction that has, like, flaws and shit, and they're not actually just, like, the super greatest eight legion ever, um, yeah, uh, oh, I'm sorry, but, um, I, I think that's, like, a very fun way to look at them because, like, I hate when people, I honestly hate when people are like, oh, they're actually double agents, I'm like, no, I think... There are warbands that are probably double agents. I think that there are warbands that are 100% suck in the dick of chaos. I think that there is both, but I do think that there are defined lines. I don't think there isn't like anything that isn't hard to find. Um, I think they're interesting in the heresy, but I think if it turns out, no, it was all a ruse and they are all like actually the greatest Marines ever. They have like super... And they were, like, super, like, the best spies ever, and they have infiltrators and everything and shit. Um, then they're F-tier. They're, that's bullshit. That is so bullshit. Because the entirety of the Legion system is predicated on the fact that every single one of these guys is equal, more or less, but they have specialties that make it so that sometimes they can counter others. Like, Iron Warriors are probably going to get their shit rocked by uh, night, uh, night Lords because Iron Warriors do not know how to handle people who are great at infiltration. 
uh, world eaters can probably rock the shit out of fucking um, uh, Raven Guard because Raven Guard are up about hit and hit and run tactics, but world eaters are meant to hit, stay stuck in, and you can't go anywhere. Fucking uh, same with like um, generalist legions like the Ultramarines and the Black Legion. That would be a stalemate forever because that's the whole point of them. So the Alpha Legion's whole shtick is that they are not going to be stronger than any other legion. They just have a different specialization. So with that in mind, it, uh, fucking I don't know. <laughs> Do, okay, so let's break this down. Do I like them more than I like the word bears? Yes. Do I like them more than I like the Thousand Sons? Yes. Do I like them more than the Blood Angels? Oh, fuck yeah. Do I like them more than I like the Emperor's Children? Yes. Space Wolves? Definitely. I find they're like some of the most fun parts of the Horus Heresy. Um, I like them more than the Black Legion, which is cool, because like Black Legion kind of sucks, but like they're kind of fun. Then we have Salamanders. Uh, salamanders, do I like them more than salamanders? Yes, but it's getting harder for me to say yes. Uh, do I like them more than Raven Guard? Aesthetically, yes, they win out. Actually, I do have Alpha Legion miniatures next to me. I'm painting Alpha Legion for, um, a, a, a fucking, I have Alpha Legion miniatures for Legions Imperialis. Uh... Uh, and then, do I like them more than Iron Hands? Yeah, I do. Dark Angels? Definitely. White Scars. That's the tipping point right there. I think they're either above or below White Scars. Um, because I like White Scars gimmick. I like White Scars so much. I like, like, I like them so fucking much. But I do like the Alpha Legion a lot. Hmm... Hmm. I definitely, I think, just because I'm on the fence, I'm going to have to put them higher than um, White Scars. I, 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 I don't feel comfortable doing anything else. Alpha Legion F tier always. Please, no. So, <laughs> Nick Scott in the chat, please no. <laughs> Guys, are you high? Nah, I just have defined tastes. Like I have, like I like what I like. Uh, they're just, you know what? I'll say they're tied for second. I'll t I'll say they're tied with White Scars because I do like them both. Uh, Beastmen, Space Marines are possible. Death Guard at Reed Lords of Silence. Okay, so this is the definitive fuck you. I'm right tier list of every single Space Marine Legion ranked. From how the like I like them most to I like them least. Hi, Future Arthur here, and I hope you enjoyed the tier list. I don't usually do stream uploads for main releases for this channel, but I thought that was kind of fun, and a lot of people were asking me for it, so hope you enjoyed it. Other than that, if you want to watch me live more often, you should go follow my Twitch, because I do have one of those. I am taking a break from it for a little bit now, but I am still streaming every Friday with my good friend B. Alongside that, on Sundays, I stream 40k games of some sort, and if you tune in this Sunday at about 7 EST, I'll be streaming Space Marine in preparation for the release of Space Marine 2. So if you like this kind of content, make sure to, you know, like and subscribe, because it shows me that you really do enjoy it. Alongside that, special thanks to my channel members for supporting me, and if you want to support me as well as gain access to additional content, then become a channel member today. Thanks again for watching, and until next time.